Welcome back guys to another episode of The Road Chose Me. On today's episode, we are heading to Tasmania. So we finished exploring Victoria for now. We've been all over the place. We just hopped on a ferry from Melbourne down here to the island of Tasmania that's off the southern tip of Australia. So this is another state of Australia. It was a 10 hour ferry to get here. I've never been to Tasmania before. This is rugged, remote wilderness. 40% of this island is dedicated to national park or UNESCO World Heritage Sites. That's how epic this island is. I cannot wait to get out and explore. Let's back up a little bit. I'll show you how we got here and then we'll let the adventures roll here in Tasmania. So here we are, we've finally arrived. We're in the lineup to get on the Spirit of Tasmania, the ship that's gonna take us across to Tasmania. And so here we're in line with all the cars. There's the ship you can see, the big red thing. And then just across to the right, that is the skyline of Melbourne. And it's just sunset, so it's absolutely beautiful to be here. And I have to say, I am extremely excited. I've never been to Tasmania in my life, somewhere I've always wanted to explore. And with all the COVID restrictions right now, Omicron's really kicking off in Australia. We were really worried that the border would close and they weren't gonna let us in. And so we booked this months ago. We just had to get a special COVID travel permit. Um, we haven't been in any high risk areas for the last 14 days, but we had to get a permit. We're gonna have to wear our masks the entire time we're on board the ship. And then fingers crossed, we're actually going to Tasmania today. Uh, and so we have a night sailing, which should be a lot of fun. And you might be able to see behind me over there, we're still in the bay here in Melbourne <laughs> and you can see the wind. You can see there's white caps here, even in the bay. Um, and there's a super famous yacht race. It goes from Sydney to Hobart. So it crosses the stretch of ocean that we're about to cross. A whole bunch of boats have dropped out of the race because the weather is so bad, because the ocean is so rough. So I don't want to jinx us, but I have a sneaking suspicion this is going to get a bit rough and I am prone to seasickness. Katie <laughs> has been seasick in the past. So let's just see how it goes. It'll be worth it to get us to Tasmania, but this could be a little bit rough. I'll bring you along as we shuffle forward in this line and actually get on board. We just had our travel permits checked. They just made sure we weren't carrying any fruit or vegetables. They don't want those things to go over to the island of Tasmania. So here we go. This is very exciting. About to get on the Spirit of Tasmania, a ship that I've heard about literally my whole life. So we're on the road in Tasmania and we are both really excited. Uh, the 10 hour ferry ride went pretty well actually. We took the overnight sailing 
the ferry goes basically every day from mainland Australia down here to Tasmania. And yeah, Tasmania is an island. It's about 230 nautical miles from the mainland of Australia. You can probably tell I read a whole bunch of brochures while I was on the ferry. And uh, this is a state of Australia, Tasmania, and it actually is less than 1% of the land mass of all of Australia. So on Australian scale, it's pretty small, but how big or how small is it really? So I just started looking it up. Tasmania is about 68,000 square kilometers. And to put that into perspective, that's about the same size as Florida, about the same size as Missouri or Oklahoma. It puts it at about the 20, 20th biggest state in America. So it's bigger than more than half the states in America. So it's actually pretty big. It just seems small compared to some of the really big Australian states. But the part that really gets me about Tasmania, which is just blowing my mind, is that only half a million people live here. So when we look at population density, that's about seven people per square kilometre. What does that mean? It means if you ranked it among US states, it would actually be the seventh least populated state in America, pretty similar to Idaho. So in terms of wilderness, in terms of getting out and exploring remote places, Tasmania is incredible. Uh, nearly half of this island is either National Park or UNESCO World Heritage. And I'm really looking forward, especially when we get over to the west of the island, there's a whole region over there, that, the Western Wilderness, I guess it's called. And there's a road that was built over there way back in the day. Tasmania kind of has a history, a lot like the American or the Canadian West, where there's a lot of resource exploitation. So there's a lot of logging here. Some of the oldest trees in the whole world are here in Tasmania. And there's also a lot of mining as well. And those have kind of gone out of favour in recent years. They're still around, they're just not sort of the main industry of Tasmania. But anyway, they built a road over in the west. And this road is so remote, it basically goes from nowhere to nowhere. It's actually called the road to nowhere. And so that's a real highlight that I'm looking forward to. And as well as that, Tasmania has some unbelievably remote and rugged coastline. Uh, and so Katie and I, we've got about two months here in Tasmania to explore all of this and so much more. We've got some really big hikes locked in. We've got tons and tons of adventures coming up. So absolutely can't wait to just get out and explore and find out what's here. To be honest, I don't even know. This is a big exploration for me as well.
going to show you guys quickly here we found this incredible place to camp on the beach for new year's eve and i've just whipped up a beautiful lunch so i'll talk about lunch and then i'll take you over and show you this stunning beach and so for lunch today something a little bit special i've whipped up some hamburgers and you're gonna say that's great dan i've seen hamburgers before why is this a big deal and the reason is these are kangaroo burgers so yes we are going to eat kangaroo for lunch so believe it or not australians do actually eat kangaroo uh, it's pretty common you'll find it in the grocery stores you can buy it as ground up you can get hamburgers you can get steak and fancy restaurants will usually have a kangaroo steak on the menu um, and so this is the one that i bought this brand here in australia is in all the supermarkets it's called k roo is the brand it's kangaroo burger um, and i'd say you can get it it is possible but I'd say it's never really taken off. Mainstream Australia doesn't really embrace eating a lot of kangaroo. Um, and there are millions of them, so don't feel like we're eating some sort of danger, endangered animal. Um, they're a pest in many parts of the country. They actually have to cull them to reduce their numbers because there are just too many of them. So eating kangaroo is actually a pretty decent thing to do for the planet. It's probably better for the planet than you know, farming cows and eating them. So I don't feel bad eating kangaroo by any means. Um, and it is, when you come over here to Australia, you can totally eat kangaroo if you want to. Um, and you're gonna ask me, what does it taste like? It is extremely lean, very low in fat, very high in protein. So it's really good for you. And it does have a little hint of a gamey flavor. So if you've ever had venison, it's just like that. You can just taste that it probably isn't a cow, but it's not nearly as gamey as anything you've hunted yourself, like a deer or a caribou or a moose or anything like that. Nothing near that. In fact, I'd say most people, if I served this to them, they wouldn't even know that it's not beef. It is so, so similar, just like a really high grade, you know, very, very low in fat. So yeah, kangaroo is actually quite common to eat. And I'm sure I'm gonna have quite a bit of it on this trip. Whenever I see it in the supermarket, I buy it. We just had steaks the other night before Christmas, because if you're gonna have a barbie with your family, you may as well have some kangaroo on the barbie. So let's go for a walk over to the beach so I can show you. You can see the Jeep in the background there. That's where we're camping. So this is like a 30 second walk to the beach. And uh, I hope you'll excuse the hat and the sunglasses. Something you might not know about Tasmania is Australia is really famous for having a huge hole in the ozone layer that's right above Australia. And so Australia has the highest rate of skin cancer in the world because of that. And that hole in the ozone layer now is basically over Tasmania. And it's actually not that hot today. It's probably 25 Celsius, like 65 or 70 Fahrenheit. The sun though has this real scorching quality to it because of the hole in the ozone layer. And so you get sunburned here really, really quickly, even though it's not so hot. It's kind of strange, but check it out. This is the beach that we've been camping on absolutely beautiful and the crazy part about this is i had no idea tasmania had beaches that are this beautiful white sand crystal clear water i always thought of tasmania as like rocky and rugged and kind of remote this is actually beach paradise i've been for a couple of swims today i went for a couple yesterday ah oh, there aren't really any waves right now for surfing but definitely i'm sure i'll get to that later but last night we went for a walk all the way down there as far as you can see there's stunning stunning rocks and this place is just absolutely breathtaking i am so stoked to be exploring tasmania i cannot wait to see what comes next 